So when I was about two years old, my parents decided they wanted to go continent hopping. So I woke up one morning and I found myself in a country called Tunis. And I soon discovered that when I would go outside to play, none of the kids understood a word I was saying. But fortunately, kids learn fast. So about a year to about a year and a half, I quickly picked up the language and was able to communicate. But then guess what? My mom and dad decided they wanted to move to Paris. So there I am, five-year-old little Fulan. And not only do the people outside not speak the language that I speak in the house with my parents, but they don't even speak the language that I've been learning for the past year and a half. And to top it all off, I get thrown into kindergarten. And sure enough, after about a year, I was fluent in French. At least as fluent as a six-year-old kid can be. Man, I can remember it like it was yesterday. There I was at the crib, chilling, watching Pink Panther, eating my croissants, and I had just started first grade. But guess what? My parents decided they wanted to move to Texas. So there I am, some little kid in the middle of Texas in a small place called Kingsville, and none of the kids in the neighborhood understand a word that I'm saying. I'm talking to them in my mother language, they don't understand the word. I'm talking to them in a the little bit of the Arabic I picked up in Tunis, they don't have a clue. I'm talking to them in French, Comment allez-vous? So blah, 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 a little bit of time passes, and now I'm in like the second or third grade or something like that, and I'm finally starting to understand how to speak English. But don't worry, soon you're gonna see where I'm going with all this and how it relates to the topic. So needless to say, I was that kid that would freeze up like a deer in headlights if the teacher ever called on him to answer something in front of other people. So by the time that I had got into high school, I forced myself to be able to do it a few times because graduating and passing my classes depending on it but nevertheless, it was torture. Now I was an entrepreneur from the beginning. Since I was like 14 years old, I pretty much been in business for myself. And at some point in my life as a young entrepreneur, I realized the power of leveraging the internet, particularly YouTube and social media. But as soon as I got my camera, sat in front of it and hit that record button, I was like that seven year old kid again. So that's what it felt like. Those first few YouTube videos were horrible, full of ums and uh, it was horrible. But the thing is, I'm always up for a good challenge. So I was like, you know what? I gotta conquer this thing. Because I'm the type of person, I don't like to be walking around out there in the world scared of anything. And as it stood, talking in front of people or talking in front of the camera scared the living daylights out of me. So I started searching YouTube about how to talk in front of a camera, public speaking, storytelling, etc. And I came across a wealth of information and tips and tricks from a bunch of my favorite YouTubers, which I would consider to be Pretty amazing at talking to a camera. People like Peter McKinnon, Nathaniel Drew, Matt Tavella, Ali Abdel, and more. So if you're uncomfortable on camera, like I was when I first started my YouTube channel about a year ago, then don't worry, you came to the right video. So get ready guys, because if you implement these tips and tricks, it's gonna up your camera presence dramatically. Welcome to Fulan Creative YouTube channel, where we do gear reviews, tips, tricks, and how-tos for creative professionals and entrepreneurs. So I'm gonna take all the stuff I learned from watching hours of content on this subject. I'm gonna trim the fat, add my two cents, and give it to you straight. And to make it as easy to understand and implement as possible, we're gonna break everything up into two separate categories, the mindset portion and the practical portion. So let's start with the mindset portion. The first thing that you gotta keep in mind is that your story, and experiences are both unique and valuable. Nobody can tell your story but you. You gotta be you. If you're just trying to be a copy and paste version of somebody else, people are gonna know from a mile away. Now does that mean you can't take something that's working for somebody else and add it to your arsenal? That's not what it means at all. And I think the following quote will help illustrate this pretty clearly. Success leaves clues. If a particular method or something is working consistently over a long period of time, you can copy it, but what you gotta do is add your unique twist, add your personality into it, add your own perspective, add something to it that makes it original. But some of you might be thinking that your lives are boring or unexciting compared to the stuff that you see posted online from others. But when you see people that are able to tell an interesting story or give an interesting perspective, many times it's not that they're living some super crazy interesting life. It's just that they have an eye to be able to extract those meaningful moments and ideas and concepts and stories from everyday life and package them and deliver them to an audience. So it's all right. Just be yourself. But on camera, you need to be the confident, slightly more energetic version of yourself. But beware, because sometimes your insecurities might get in the way. Maybe you think you're not good looking enough. Maybe you think you're too short. 
Maybe you're too tall. Maybe you're too thin. Maybe you're too fat. The truth is, nobody cares. What people actually care about is the reason that they clicked on your video in the first place. Whatever solution they were looking for, for the problem they had. Whatever information they wanted about the product they were about to buy. They're not sitting there taking the time out of their day to analyze you the way that you analyze you. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's always gonna be a troll here and there or a hater. But if you have no haters at all, then you're not doing it right. So work to improve the things about yourself that you can improve and accept the things that you can't and move on, get over yourself and give the viewer value. And that. That's really what it's all about, is the value that you bring to the table. For the type of content that I do, which is kind of educational, how-to videos, etc. one valuable tip that I picked up was that if people could walk away from your video having learned something and having laughed, then chances are they're probably going to come back for more. And the key to being able to deliver the content in a concise, natural, and digestible manner is mostly all about preparation. Just spend a little bit of time researching your topic, organizing your thoughts, and getting a general idea about what you wanna talk about before you hit that record button. The more familiar you are with the topic at hand, then the more confident and credible you're gonna come across on video. Now I know that may have been a lot to digest, but don't worry though, because we're about to move on to the practical portion, which are easy steps that you can follow and implement to help you be more confident and natural on camera. Whatever type of vibe that you're going for, make sure that your environment is conducive to that. Make sure that it's clean, tidy, move any unnecessary stuff out of the way. So just make sure that you prep your environment for recording. Oh, the next one. The next one is so simple. Try to smile. It shows you're in a good mood and that rubs off on your audience. So the next tip I have for you is make sure that you're not looking at the LCD screen when you're recording the way that I'm doing right now because you totally lose the connection with your viewer. Now when you first start, it's difficult. But then once you get used to that, all you have to do is remember is just to ignore that LCD screen and make sure you're looking straight into the lens. Now let's say you're looking into the lens, you're delivering your talk real nice, you got some momentum going and you happen to make a mistake. A mistake? I mean a mistake. Then what you could do is just instead of editing it out, just leave it in there. Depending on what type of audience you're delivering to, sometimes you can leave the mistakes in there and it actually adds to the character of the video. Now another thing that you often hear, don't think of the camera as just a camera, but imagine that it's your friend. Now you could go through the trouble of putting a wig or some sunglasses and a cap on the camera to make him look more human. That way it's not this one-eyed cyclops just staring at you and that may actually help you out. I've heard other people say that that doesn't help them and what they like to do is to imagine that they're not talking to a friend but that they're in a boardroom in some type of corporate meeting giving a presentation and that helps them to come across as more professional. And this next one is very important. Experiment with the different styles of delivering your content. So for example, I know some YouTubers that they're always using a teleprompter. Now, if you don't know what a teleprompter is, it's actually like a piece of glass that you put over the lens. So as you're looking straight into the lens, you can be reading your script and reading your lines. It's reflecting off of that glass, and so you're able to see the words, but the camera isn't. It's a pretty amazing little tool. Myself, I've never used one, because when I read off a script, it feels a bit robotic. Although I'm sure that if you practice it enough, you can get good at it to where it comes across as more natural. But generally speaking, the idea of using a teleprompter isn't something I'm too excited about. But nevertheless, if it's something that interests you, there's links in the description for an affordable teleprompter that I've heard good reviews about. The other style would be actually like writing out a physical script and then delivering that to the camera verbatim or paraphrase it a paragraph at a time. I experimented with this and honestly, I didn't like the way it came out. I wasn't able to get it to the point where it was natural. Now, if you look at certain creators, Peter McKinnon, Roberto Blake, I think both of them have mentioned that they don't use a teleprompter, they don't script their videos, and most of the time, they may not even have any bullet points. Basically, they're just freestyling ad-libbing, shooting off the hip. I also like to do that as it feels the most natural. But the thing is, is when I do it like that, sometimes the videos are very rambly and all over the place and my thoughts are all unorganized and it doesn't end up producing good results for me. So the way that I like to go about it is to just make bullet points so that I have an idea about what I'm gonna talk about and every now and then I can just quickly glance at those bullet points to remind myself of the flow of the video and then just freestyle from there. So whichever method you prefer, the only real way to get better at it is to spend some quality time with your camera and practice. Like everything else in life, the more you do it, the easier it becomes and the more comfortable it is for you. And that leads me to my next point, which is something I picked up from Sean Cannell over at Think Media. And what it is, is that you should start before you're ready. You just gotta hit record. The secret to making one great video 
is to have made 20 real bad videos. Because each time you make a video and you're not quite satisfied with the results, then that's a chance for you to learn and improve. So what I would do is start before you're ready. And every single time you make a video, look at it, analyze it, and just pick one thing from that video that you want to correct or you want to improve in the next video you make. And I'm not talking about just putting the camera in front of you and just pretending like you're recording or recording a video for yourself and not uploading it. Go ahead and upload it, publish it, make a YouTube channel. That's how you're gonna get the most real experience. Now let's say you make a YouTube channel, you practice for a year, you practice for two years and you're just completely dissatisfied with the channel. Well, you could always make the videos private. Or if you think that the video sucks so bad that YouTube somehow flagged your channel and it's never gonna promote your channel even when you start making good videos, then don't worry about it. You could just delete the channel and start a new one. But the point is, you need to start before you're ready so you can start improving right away. The longer you delay and procrastinate, the longer it's gonna take for you to get the necessary experience to start to get comfortable in front of the camera. Now I've seen a few YouTubers out there where they can hit the record button on a camera, give like a 30 minute talk with no jump cuts and they can just deliver the whole thing flawlessly. That's a personal goal that I have because myself, I rely heavily on editing and jump cuts to take out all of the gaps and the ums and the uhs and the mistakes and the dead space. So if you're able to deliver a concise, good, articulate talk straight into the camera without editing it, that's amazing. But even if you can't, you can do some amazing things with editing, like covering up the cuts with B-roll or using jump cuts, which in some ways is kind of like a stylistic choice on its own because content that's consumed on YouTube has its own style and its own look. And part of that style, in my opinion, is jump cuts, especially because it makes the content extremely concise, takes out all the empty space and gives that fast paced vibe to the video where the viewer feels like they're not having their time wasted and they're getting the information they need in a short and concise video. Now, if you've tried to use jump cuts as well, but for some reason your jump cuts don't flow right or there's something missing or doesn't seem quite right, then don't worry because there's an editing secret to be able to make the jump cuts flow naturally. And once I learned that, my average view duration on my videos and my audience retention improved dramatically. But that's for another video. And by the time you're watching this, that video may have already been made. So check at the end of this video for that thumbnail if you're interested in checking that out. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already done so, and hit that little bell icon so that you're notified when I release a new video. And that's all for me, guys. So until next time, it's your boy Fulan and I'm out. Peace.